Honourable Minister of Health, Dr. James Riley, Mr. Wood, and the distinguished members of the Healthy Island Council. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It gives me great pleasure, and it is a distinct honour to address this inaugural meeting of the Healthy Island Council. I am extremely encouraged to see the large number of women on this council. Well done. <laughs> the Healthy Island Council will bring in the changes that is required to make this country a great country, a healthy country. And women, as I say in many fora, are change agents. So, Minister Riley, I fully agree with you. I think this council will be very successful. You do have challenges. You will be overseeing the implementation of the Healthy Island Framework, and you will do so based on firm foundation. A great deal of research and critical thinking has obviously gone into the development of this comprehensive whole of government framework. This is the kind of bold policy instrument that can transform, and I use the term transform deliberately, the health of the Irish people and give other countries a model to follow. The Healthy Island Framework responds to three trends that are now nearly universal in every region of the world. Rising levels of chronic diseases, lifestyle behavior that are the root causes of many of these diseases, and persistent health inequalities. Like most other advanced societies, Ireland is particularly concerned about the growing prevalence of obesity and overweight, also in children. In countries with an advanced healthcare system, like Ireland, the true health impact of chronic non-communicable diseases can be masked. They can be masked because of the good medical care that detects problems early and get high blood pressure down, reduce cholesterol levels, and improves glucose metabolism. So you are not actually seeing the real impact of all these problems. Can you imagine if you're living in another country who do not have the level of health care you, you, you enjoy, the first sign of trouble we see is people present themselves to the emergency department with a heart attack. Too late for diabetes that they require an amputation. That is too late. It not only costs the government a lot, but also affect the health and the well-being. And the term well-being is important for all these individuals. But obesity and overweight, as I said, unlike you know, uh, the, some of the chronic diseases, they cannot be masked. And obesity and overweight are the highly visible signal that big trouble is on its way that an increased prevalence of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and several diet-related cancers will follow soon. Given the framework's goal, the Healthy Island Council is fortunate to have the President of Ireland as its patron. In all my years in office as a Director General of WHO, and in all my visits to countries, nothing pleases me most is to see a government that take high-level responsibility for the health of its citizens. Financial investment in health is important, but political commitment counts the most. It is political commitment that consistently brings the most dramatic improvements in health. And high-level political commitment makes things happen. It can shape the environments in which people, including school children, make their lifestyle choices. It can make sure that people get the facts they need to take good care of their health. And I mean facts that are not biased or confused by industries marketing and advertising practices. 
Government support can generate media interest, and I thank the media members for joining us this afternoon. And this media attention is important. This helps the public to get the information they need to choose health-promoting behaviours. Governments can also reduce social inequalities by crafting policies that make equity an explicit objective. Market forces alone, ladies and gentlemen, can never guarantee a fair distribution of health benefits. Only sound government policies with the right value system that can make this happen. Above all, high-level political commitment can get multiple sectors of government and society working in tandem with cohesive and coherent policies that promote health and well-being. Such a broad-based whole-of-government approach is the best way, probably the only way, to, protect, to prevent chronic diseases and obesity and reduce their burden on societies and the healthcare system. The emphasis, is, the emphasis that you are giving to prevention, early detection and equity is most welcome. Prevention must be the cornerstone of our response to chronic diseases. The cause of treating these diseases, especially cancer, are moving towards a situation where no country in the world, no matter how wealthy you are, can afford it. A report issued by the World Health Organization, the 20, 2014 World Cancer Report, make the conclusion that no country in the world can hope to treat its way out of the cancer crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, the Healthy Island Framework responds to a national situation that, from one perspective, looks extremely good. This country has seen striking improvements in life expectancy in just the past decade, now surpassing the EU average. And in also in the last decade, mortality rates have dropped by more than 22%. These positive achievements are now being jeopardized, jeopardized by a new set of threats. Two out of every three adults in this country are obese or overweight. Around 25% of children in all social economic groups are overweight. This country has around one million smokers. And the per capita, per capita alcohol consumption is among the highest in Europe. You are also coping with an increase in mental health problems, partly, of course, associated with the economic crisis. However, the good thing is you are getting out of that. You are making progress. The economic data is good. Therefore, what am I telling you? What I'm saying is that it is extremely challenging for all of you and, of course, for the leaders in this country to turn around trends that are driven by universal forces like demographic aging, urbanization, and the globalization of unhealthy lifestyles. Powerful international corporations amplify the spread of unhealthy lifestyles through their marketing of tobacco, alcohol, and unhealthy foods and beverages, also to children. Economic power read readily translates into political power. And I congratulate you and the Prime Minister for the consensus and the universal support for what you are doing for Healthy Ireland. The fact that you get consensus vote is a tribute to your leadership because you are telling them the truth. These are challenges this country must face. You cannot afford not to take action. This framework, I have studied the framework, and I can tell you this is one of the best I have ever seen. It is a carefully orchestrated and unite, in a united fight as a whole of government and the whole of society to take on yourself the ownership and the leadership 
to make changes. Engagement goes from the national level to the local, from the heights of academic research, and I thank all the scientists and the experts who provide their academic you know, knowledge and analysis, from academic research to the grassroots voices of civil society organizations who are extremely important, and right down to the communities and to the families. That's where actions will happen. The framework brings ministers of health together, not just health, but also other ministers, ministers of environment, community, local government, education, and others. And also you have a minister for children and youth affairs. So bringing them together is important. Why? Many of the issues, many of the determinants are not under the direct control of Minister Riley. So to have a whole of government approach would make this much easier. So the shared responsibility also means shared benefits. I was most impressed to learn that the framework sets out more than 60 specific actions to be implemented in a coordinated manner by government ministries and different segments of society. And for this year, the critical initial project is a development of a national physical activity plan, which I understand is well under, it's, uh, under the way. And actually, I heard a report from your colleague who is responsible for this initiative. Again, I am impressed with the level of critical analysis and the degree of detail, including improved access to green space in your cities and the addition of more cycle lanes more playgrounds, and more well-lit paths. You might also want to ensure that the lights at pedestrian crosswalks are timed in such a way to allow the elderly, like myself, to safely cross the street. I qualify for that, and I declare interest, and I'm advocating <laughs> to make sure that you also, but actually, as I imagine, uh, in such a thoroughly and well thought out framework, you have already included this uh, in, in, in the framework as well. And you have met some, you have put down some prerequisites, prerequisites for success. And you have also included a framework for measurement. And I encourage you to do so. Measurement is important to show progress and to show success and to reinforce uh, the support you deserve to do your very difficult work and challenging work. And I'm also seeing this in your document. There is no replacement for transparency and accountability, and this is the way you can give your report card, Mr. Wood, next year and the year after that. And David Cho, as I uh, talked to Minister Riley, I got his permission to track your work not to be, uh, how should I say, giving you evaluation, but to follow your progress, to learn from you. And I got the permission to share your work with the rest of the world. Because there are many countries who are struggling to find the how to implement whole of government approach and whole of society approach. A lot of talk was done in many fora, but the how is the most important part. Ladies and gentlemen, there is one final reason for my optimism about the transformative power of the Healthy Island Framework. This government has courage. Full implementation of the WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control would deal the biggest blow to the industry. And tobacco smoking is the single most important risk factor and it kills more people than HIV, TB, malaria combined together. So you are doing the right thing. That big show, as I stand here and I promise you, we will do everything possible to support your efforts. No doubt, your brave action will turn the tobacco industry into a determined and ruthless opponent. 
but you will also make many friends who will give you their full support. And the big show in particular. And I have Dr. Douglas Batcher here with me. He is my expert on tobacco control. Anything you need to know, the dirty trick about the industry, he would be your en encyclopedia. Is that the word? Yes. So on that, let me once again commend you for your leadership. Just think about what you're going to do, what you're going to leave in terms of legacy for the next generation of Irish people. On that, once again, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Chen, for those um, incredible words of encouragement that we need, because this is a huge task and one that we're willing to have a cut at, absolutely, but one that we know is going to be very hard. Um, with that, I'd like to wrap up proceedings and uh, call the first council session to an end and congratulate everybody on the start of a very good day. Thank you very much. <laughs>